Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton are in a virtual tie right now in the Democratic presidential race. And as a result, there's growing speculation it might not be settled until the Democratic convention. Do we have a race or not? Hillary Clinton has won the most votes. Look at that, a little over 9 million to a little under uh, over 8.5 million. Adding up all the votes each of the candidates has gotten thus far, Obama, 8,228,000. Clinton, 8,028,000. Barack Obama has won more delegates in the primaries and caucuses, 951 to 904. 918 to 885. 1,009. Clinton, 944. That is just amongst elected delegates. Hillary Clinton ahead in the superdelegates, 214 to 144. The superdelegates, Obama says he has 174 of those. Clinton has 263 of those. We estimate that Hillary Clinton has 1,108 delegates. Barack Obama has 1,049 delegates. Our latest count gives Clinton a 25, believe it or not, 25 delegate lead. Which gives her a very slim lead of 23 delegates. Who's ahead? Where does this race stand? So who's ahead? Bottom line here, this thing is really up in the air on the Democratic side. But what about the role of unelected, or so-called superdelegates? The superdelegates, the elected officials, the party uh, leaders will be the, the P, a large group of them, almost 800 of them, may actually have the say in this thing, which is kind of ironic that you have the first woman, the first African Americans, or new politics, and it may be decided by sort of backroom deals, which I hope doesn't happen, but it, could, it is possible. Here's what Senator Obama said about that this week. My strong belief is that if we uh, end up with the most states and the most pledged delegates from the most voters in the country, that it would be problematic for the political insiders to overturn uh, the judgment of the voters. Does he really mean that? Because by that logic, it he would mean that Ted Kennedy, Kennedy and John yeah. Kerry and Deval Patrick, his three big supporters right. in Massachusetts, would have to vote for Hillary Clinton because right. she, she won the Massachusetts primary. I think it's very hard to, kn to have a consistent principle for what these, uh, what <laughs> these delegates should do. When it comes to the superdelegates, uh, that is part of the process, much like uh, having a Congress that's elected every two years and a Senate elected every six years. You know, the superdelegates aren't pledged. The uh, elected delegates are, but the superdelegates are really in flux until they cast their votes at the convention. But I think what's going to happen is this. You're going to see great movement of the superdelegates with the momentum of this campaign. Look, we don't wear capes. We can't hear the sound of a pen <laughs> drop miles away. We don't drive Batmobiles. Uh, and no one wants to see us in spandex. We should <laughs> represent the will of the voters of this country, and we should not stop this contest prematurely in order to rush the decision. Donna's comment illustrates that it would be a disaster for the party if it somehow came down to horse trading among superdelegates. I don't know how it would come out. It would be very ugly. It would be a terrible thing to deliver the nomination by party insiders, because I think that would send a terrible signal to this incredible enthusiasm that's building in our country right. for the kind of leader Barack is. Are you worried that the party bosses could make this decision as opposed to those who were actually elected by rank and file Democrats? If you call them bosses, I, I call them leadership. These are individuals like Claire, like myself, who ultimately get elected so statewide. So you're saying it would be appropriate if you, the, the superdelegates, had the final say well, I uh, certainly, in this uh, decision? Well, I certainly believe that we're going to get to a convention where it is my belief that Senator Clinton will have the delegates necessary to win. They're going to wine and dine these superdelegates. It could end up ugly at the end. You've been, and I suspect you're aware of this, something of a pinata for the Democrats <laughs> uh, during their campaign. My attitude is so long as they're talking about me, we have a better chance of winning because our candidate will. What's going to matter is uh, not the past, but the future when it comes to campaigns. And uh, if the Democrat Party feels like they can win an election by focusing on me, I, I think they'll be making a huge tactical mistake. But I hope they do that then, because our candidate will be able to talk about the future and what this person intends to do for the country. Are you planning to stay in the race now? Well, I am, Bob. And, and uh, when I hear people say it's practically impossible, Nothing is impossible. You need 1,191 delegates. You have 231, as I mentioned. Uh, that means you need 960. Mm -hmm. There are only 819 delegates to win. This country was built on the impossible. And it's impossible that I'm still in the race. That's what most people would have said a few months ago. 
in politics, so many things can happen that can change the landscape overnight. A candidate can say something, do something, something can happen, and everything can change. The thing is, it's not just how many I need. Senator McCain also needs that many. And if he doesn't get that many, he's not the nominee either. This thing could go to the convention. If we go all the way to the convention, uh, then so be it. You uh, heard uh, uh, Governor Huckabee. He's not getting out. Do you think it's possible that he can do it? No, going into last, uh, after Super Tuesday, for Huckabee to win the nomination, he'd have to take 83% of the delegates who are yet to be elected. I find it very unlikely, uh, it, it completely implausible. You still think that Senator Clinton will wind up with the nomination? I do. I think we're likely to see her fall behind in the delegate count here in February because the contests advantage uh, Senator Obama. But I think we're likely to see then in March and April f for her to climb back into the lead. Do you think she would be easier to beat come fall or would Senator Obama be hardest to beat? She appears to be a little bit weaker, but that's at today. And uh, he's awfully thin, both on experience and on the issues. Do you think there's a rush to judgment about Barack Obama? Do you think voters know enough about him? And I, I certainly don't know what he believes in. The only foreign policy thing I remember he said was uh, he's going to attack Pakistan and embrace Amani Najat. So why do you think he's gotten this far if people don't know what he stands for? You're the pundit. I'm just a simple president. <laughs> The Democrats may be treating him like the nominee, but John McCain is still dealing with significant discontent in his own ranks. Doesn't he have a lot of work to do with conservatives right now? He needs the energy that conservatives bring to the party, and I think when they become acquainted with his record, and when you contrast that with what the Democrats will put up, I think they'll come aboard. But we have some work to do, and our door is open, and I think we're going to get them back. How could he picked up two states yesterday, even though uh, Romney uh, remo removed himself from the the uh, race. What's lay laying in wait for him out there right now, uh, Super Tuesday, had over 14 million vote in the Democrat primary, only a little over 8 million vote in the Republican primary. McCain only carried his home state by 47 percent. McCain doesn't even have an organization. He's going to have to rely on people and he's not going to be able, he's got to put together a winning coalition and it's not, a winning coalition is not just independents and moderate Republicans. You've got to have your base uh, in there not just voting for you, but working for you. Part of a campaign is for the nominee of a party to rally the party and to rally the, you know, the folks that are going to end up being the base from which he operates. Question. Is John McCain a true conservative? Absolutely. I, I know him well. I know his convictions. I know the principles that drive him. And no, my, no doubt in my mind he's a true conservative. If John's a nominee, he has got some convincing to do uh, to convince people that he is a solid conservative. Um, and I'd be glad to help him if he is the nominee. I do think he's got some challenges. He has been often the voice in the wilderness. I'm not going to say he's uh, anything but a conservative. I've, I've said that publicly before. I'll say it again. I do think that there are issues where he takes sharp contrast with the mainstream of conservative thought. Rush Limbaugh has taken after both you and John McCain. If either of these two guys get the nomination, either McCain or Huckabee, it's going to destroy the Republican Party. I really like Rush. I've been a fan for many, many years and love his show. I think he's been a great voice of, of conservatism. He's, he's been one of those guys that has uh, used a lot of humor and uh, sometimes some sharp-tongued uh, zingers to kind of uh, uh, keep the movement uh, thoughtful. He's got a right to say what he thinks. I will make this observation, Tim. Uh, you know, he did everything he could to knock McCain and me out of the process, and unfortunately for him, we're still the two that are on our feet. I think we just got to be a little bit cautious about uh, these people are influential, they're important. Senator McCain has a lot of work to do, but the question is not getting people, the, the vast majority of Republicans, to unite behind his candidacy, it's getting them energetic and passionate and committed to doing what needs to be done to win the election in the fall. We heard both governors on the Democratic side said that no matter what happens now, the Democrats are going to be united in November. Is that Death true for the Republicans? No, we don't know yet. Uh, you're absolutely right. The Democrats, they've been out of power for eight years now. They're just, they are very, very hungry. And they'll come together and support anybody uh, that uh, calls themselves a Democrat. Uh, we're not there. We're, we are a dispirited party that's trying to rebuild itself.